what's so special about quantum physics. As a scientist, we explore natural phenomena and we use, say, quantum physics to realize some of the units that we're talking about, such as time. You ask yourself, how well can we measure the time? And you can even say that's a very deep philosophical question. Scientists like myself, when we say clock, we are really sort of exploring the frontiers of quantum physics and quantum technology to see where we can go. We build atomic clocks that's based on natural phenomena of quantum physics. It will help us navigate in the universe in the future, maybe even going out of the galaxies to explore these very deep mystery from the edge of the universe. As we know, time and, and space is fundamentally connected. How do we connect the quantum phenomena, uh, uh, something which is happening on a microscopic scale, to something that humans feel comfortable at defining as a unit they use every day? Clock is, is really a quantum sensor. It's something we use to measure. Measurement really is at the heart of the modern science. Everything is based on measurement. And measurement is really about feeding the world out and checking whether our theory made a sense. As you get more and more precise measurements and the level of precision improves, you get to discover deeper, deeper truth. Victoria, welcome. Very nice uh, welcome to meet to you. Yeah, Thank very nice you. meeting you. Thanks. So you're uh, in California, you're based in California? Uh, yeah, I'm at Caltech. Caltech. In, in Pasadena, yes. My oh, I didn't know. Yes. You didn't tell me, they're from Caltech. Yeah. Have you watched the movie called Interstellar? I haven't seen Interstellar, but it, it was a great movie. You know, this astronauts went in uh, to the, near the black hole. When he come, when he came back, the daughter was much older than him. Yeah, and you will see some of that in our lab. Great. It's not a science fiction. You yeah. actually can actually see clocks slow down uh, yeah. <laughs> as you get closer to the to the center of the Earth. No kidding. It's a relativity effect that Einstein postulated a right, hundred years ago that's called a general relativity that time is all relative yeah. and a time is going to be different and we can test that you can, if you raise your watch by a couple of centimeters the time slows uh, the time speeds up at a very small level only modern atomic clocks now can detect those if you bought a swiss watch and a very most high-end expensive watch and it's made by this intricate mechanical design. If it's a man-made, you can't really guarantee every single watch you produce from your factory will exactly be the same. And that's the basic principle of atomic clock. It's like we can build a cage that's made out of light, and we put atoms one by one, let it oscillate back and forth like a pendulum. And this swing can go on back and forth a million billion times without decaying. We understand how these atoms can interact and how these atoms can collectively give us the time. We build atomic clocks as nothing but a pendulum that's based on natural phenomena of quantum physics. Believe me, all the cables there, we, there's a purpose for all these cables. <laughs> it's actually the, the world's most accurate atomic clock that's ever built. It's called a strontium optical lattice clock. If you look just to the right side of this lens into the vacuum chamber. Do you yes. see a little ball of a blue yes. light? These yes. are like 10 million atoms of strontium fluorescing under this light. And you can see it's a stationary, right? It's not moving anywhere. Yeah. It's like it's just suspended in the middle of, there's nothing else in there. It's vacuum chamber and the light. Th those are the atoms that provides this swing of the pendulum that when you open the grandfather's clock, that's the first thing you see is that it's something that's swinging back and forth, a pendulum. That's your pendulum right there, that, that blue ball, oscillating at about a million billion cycles per second. Over the entire age of the universe, it would lose less than one second of the time. Uh, 
I think a more exciting is to turn this into a device that can measure dynamics, measuring things that's happening with time. Could you, by following how much time slows back out the mass that yes. is... Yeah, so, so could you get information about the core of the Earth more yes. precisely? Like a volcano eruption, you know, things are... Say you place clock around your Yellowstone uh, National Park and see whether there will be a danger where there's too much mass to start to amassing underneath and eventually it's going to erupt. It would be great to have that warning. <laughs> If you think about if we want all future cars to be all driven by themselves, if you have clocks, you can, in principle, keep track of all the cars on Earth and keep them at a certain distance apart that they will never have any collisions. There's still certainly many mysteries out there. Science has always gone this way. You use the, what you have understood, you build a better instrumentation, and you go out there, you measure, you'll find things which is different from what you predict. You have heard the terms of dark matter, dark energy. So there's something beyond, and we don't know yet what that is. There are explosions happening when the black holes merge, there's gravitational waves being emitted throughout the universe. Maybe we can even hear the echo of Big Bang you know, coming back from the edge of the universe as you build the clock to the 19th, 20th digits, what are we going to see? This connection between quantum physics and the gravity, I, I think it will be great to, as we continue to advance the clock precision, that one day make a contribution to connecting these two different pieces of the physics together. And that would be a, a very important piece of the puzzle of the universe.